and the standards within the region on the continent to harmonize all of them is going to be a key test, I think, of making sure that we can have a smooth operation uh, in this particular industry. Of course, some of you would have heard about the recent challenges of aflatoxin, uh, whether they are alleged or real between countries at border points, that has disrupted a lot of trade flows. Uh, these are the kind of issues that we need to nab in the bud so that they don't become a permanent uh, problem. Issues around taxes, of course, very important. We've had numerous uh, complaints about tax-related uh, challenges, whether they are VAT on seeds, for example, in Kenya, or manufacturing under bond, uh, issues around high cost of animal feeds. These are things that would play a significant role in managing the cost of food, which in itself is a key indicator of competitiveness of many countries. There has been a lot of efforts to make sure that ESC member states work together in dealing with issues of uh, COVID testing. And we are now at an advanced stage in producing a COVID passport certificate so that eventually when a driver, a truck driver is vaccinated, that they don't need to go through a testing uh, program uh, of COVID every time they want to cross between one country and the other. And that is work in progress, and hopefully we should be able to see that. So the future of green trade in Africa is about the future of Africa's economy in building back better first, but also sustaining the growth and development that we're looking for um, uh, in, in this continent. One of the things we've always pushed for, as far as Agra is concerned, is the fact that smallholder farmers remain at the center of Africa's inclusive agricultural transformation. We very much know that um, a lot of the grains that we do trade on are staples, you know, like the, the maize or the soya bean, you know, or the, uh, the, the peanuts, the cashew nuts, the macadamia, you know, quite a number of these, um, uh, um, you know, or, or it's the rice, actually, you know. Um, and these, these um, uh, uh, products are important, you know, not just for um, uh, ourselves, but also for the fact that it helps our kids to go to school, particularly the kids of that woman smallholder farmer who is trying to make a living for her and her family. Is the trade happening efficient? Is it being hindered by this or that issue? Is that trade structured? Are there contracts? Are there clear agreements and specifications or is it happening sort of very informally? Is it inclusive? Is a smallholder farmer able to also get access and sell their produce, aggregate and so on and so forth? And above all, all that effort of getting to produce grain and trade it and process it, does it give you a return? Is it profitable? Because if it doesn't give a return, then it will not be sustainable. And that's indeed what we live for. To do that, our chief guest, ladies and gentlemen, we have four main interventions at EAGC. One of them is policy advocacy, and this summit is the apex of our policy advocacy interventions, where we engage with governments, with stakeholders, to uh, advocate for policies that will uh, give us an enabling environment for, for the grain sector to perform with minimum issues. So in, in policy, we address many issues from quality and standards, from uh, phytosanitary and sanitary issues, from trade, taxes, and relations around that, and many other aspects that concern policy. Mm -hmm.